microcasting for your city. Talkopolis. Bandwidth for today's show is brought to you by SoftLayer.com. We love SoftLayer here at Talkopolis. They are the greatest hosting company ever. They make everything easy. Check out their website at SoftLayer.com. Thanks again for sponsoring the show. Also by Nashville Violins, the string player's number one choice for their string instrument needs. Nashville Violins offers everything from lessons to repairs. Make sure you check them out at NashvilleViolin.com. You're watching Music Business Week. Our guest, Dave Isaacs. Welcome to Music Business Week. I am your host, Greta Gaines. Thanks for joining us here at Talkopolis. My guest is Dave Isaacs. Hello. Nice to have you here. Glad to be here. You do so much. Tell us about the different roles and the different things you do. I keep an office on Music Row where I teach and coach and mentor young artists and work with songwriters on becoming better musicians and I work with people who just like to play music and want to get better at it and I also teach music at Tennessee State University I'm in the music department over there and teach music and music technology and I'm a player myself and a songwriter and and an artist and it's it is a lot but at the same time it's all it's all integrated it's all part of the same thing that I always grew up when I, from the moment that I started playing music and the bug bit me, I always said that this was what I wanted, that I wanted my life to revolve around music. And when I started teaching and realized how gratifying that was and that it was not only another way to make a living but also a way to give back, to, to pass along. I mean, I was really lucky. I had really great teachers beyond just guitar teachers telling me, okay, put your finger here, play it like this, but teaching me about music and how to think about music and how to understand music in this way that was really so so far above, I would say, the average person's approach to it, that they, they taught me to have this big picture view of it. And when I came to Nashville and started working with different kinds of people, and I was teaching kids and I was teaching hobbyists and I was teaching aspiring professionals and I was teaching professionals and started to see that this sort of big picture view of things was so valuable to everybody no matter what part of the business that you were in so whether I'm coaching a student band at the university or whether we're working in the recording studio and I'm teaching kids how to run a console or whether I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one guitar lesson or helping a songwriter develop more um, interesting and more sophisticated chord structures or instrumental hooks or whatever it is. It's just about sharing the knowledge that I've accumulated and the way of thinking about music that, that I learned. And yeah. How do you get your students? Is it, is it through NashvilleGuitarGuru.com? That's a, a major source there. And referrals. You said something in the green room that really interested me. You said some people golf, some people play guitar. As far as hobbyists go, let's say that I am um, a lawyer, mm -hmm. and I, I, I loved music when I was young, but I decided to get you know have a career in law, and I'm now in my 40s or my 50s, and I'm financially set, I have the time, but I still miss it, and I mm -hmm. still want to get to the next level. How would you help me do that specifically? Well, depending on where you are. I mean, if someone is just starting out, then just now like anybody else. I'm, let's say that I had a band in college, okay, and I was, right. pretty, I was pretty good, but it's been 20 years. Then it's, you know, it comes back to that big picture thing, because it's, what I found is that the most successful way to teach someone to really improve, I think when people get stuck, or let's say, you played 20 years ago and you got to a certain point and then you pick it up again and you say well how am I going to get better when we were first learning how to play we just explored you know someone showed you how to do something and so you sat and played with it and you found things and when you come back to it later on in life I get a lot of questions like well okay I don't know what to do now I don't know how to go to how to go beyond this and it always comes down to me to just saying well Think about how many things you could do. So you want to be able to be a better lead player. Have someone who comes in and says, I can play blues licks, I want to be able to play jazz. How do I get into that? So you say, well, okay, 
play something for me, and they'll play it. And I'll say, well, okay, from here you went there. Well, where else could you go? Well, I don't know. We'll try that. So I'll give a little guidance, but instead of just saying, put your finger here, I mean, yes, there'll be concrete stuff where right. here's a new chord that you can use. Here's a new form that you can use. But the best musicians that I know are always reaching for something different that they can do. They're always thinking about what they're doing and thinking about it in a way that's not, how do I reproduce what I did yesterday, but how do I take a step beyond what I did yesterday? And the only way that you can do that is just to ask yourself, okay, now what? Right, but you'll put them with other people. I will do that too. Yeah. Because I think there's a point where to develop as a musician, unless you are strictly a soloist, like there are people who are amazing solo guitar players. They can sit down and just do incredible things on their own. And if that's your goal, then you lock yourself in a practice room and you do that until you have mastered it. But most people, and it's my favorite thing, I think it's the coolest thing about playing music is what made me want to do it for the rest of my life, is that interaction with other people. And if you don't have that as part of your experience of learning, I don't think you get over that hump because then it's about communicating. Yeah. Not just with the audience, but with each the other. The jamming thing is incredible. And when I've traveled around the world, some of the coolest experiences I've had would be like up in Canada or when I was in Nepal and someone finds out you're a musician. You don't have to even be able to speak the same language, exactly. but you can jam. Right. Yeah. Because you do speak the same language. You do. You speak that language. Yeah. Um, what about advice for people coming um, directly to Music City to become a star? Oh boy, become a star. That's, that's the tricky one because none of us really know what makes, I mean, there's so many people here that you can look at them, watch them perform and say, that person has star quality, that person has the charisma. But I think that in, in the modern music industry, it really is a, a great asset to any artist to be as savvy as possible about every aspect of what they need to know. So they need to know about the music business so that they can have some empowerment in the, the business part of their careers. Do you teach them about the music? Uh, I, I mean do. The I, I do in the extent that if they ask about, I had this opportunity, what do you think about okay. that? I mean, all I can do is share my own experience and experiences of people I know but I've known a lot of people over the years, and here, of course, you get to know people who have done everything. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's part of, if someone who's coming to me, maybe it starts off with them just wanting to play guitar better, but if they want to be an artist, then it's, it's all part of the same thing, because, well, okay, how does this fit into how you present yourself? And when you're gonna be on stage, how, are, how do you want to be seen? How do you want to interact with your band? How do you want to handle the relationships with your band on a personal level, on a business level? How are you going to handle that? You look at how many bands break up hating each other, you know, and you look at the successful ones that go on and you say, well, what are the business arrangements that allow them to continue to work together for 15, 25, 35, 40 years? and still be able to go and make music together with smiles on their faces and not be faking it, you know? And so do you actually know the specifics on a lot of successful bands and what their actual business some, arrangements are? Yes. Yeah. Some. I learned a little bit about the Stones from reading uh, mm -hmm. Keith Richards' uh, autobiography. It was a lot, of interesting, a lot of interesting stuff in there, but it, this is all stuff that in the past we just figured out the hard way. Right. And all, made all those mistakes. Right. And so how do you figure out how to charge people? Does everybody get charged the same? Or? It, it depends on the way that I look at it is if someone is making a commitment to come and see me on a regular basis and they've got a slot that's theirs, then that's one rate. And then if someone is coming in from out of town for one session, or I get this a lot, someone will come in from another state and say, I want to take some lessons in Nashville. I'll be here for a week. I want to take three lessons. So I have to find the time to slot them into my schedule, but I'll generally give them more time too, just because you have to get to know people. Someone I see every week, after, after really a couple of lessons, I know where they are, I know what we're doing. And if it's more of a one-time thing, or if we're doing a very specific thing like 
studying music theory and orchestration and stuff like that. I have a student who is into electronic music and is and wants to know about theory so that he can understand more about putting things together. And that's a very specialized thing and that's pulling on my knowledge as a as a schooled musician. And that's not something that they could get from just going to a music store and taking guitar lessons from who Oh, they have to go to school. Right. Together, yeah. So it's sort of it's like a Chinese menu, you know? Uh -huh. Here is this service and here is this service. Yeah. Is that what Chinese menus are like? Well, <laughs> like, um, I guess maybe that, was, maybe that wasn't the greatest <laughs> example. But you know, you pick one from column A, oh, one yeah. from column B, that kind All of thing. Car. Do you know anybody else in Nashville who's doing exactly what you're doing? I don't believe so. I yeah, don't, I I don't know anyone. Yeah, I don't either. So what, what's coming up for you? What are you excited about? Oh, God, all kinds of things. I'm doing, uh, let's see, um, I don't know if this will air before or after I've done okay. this, but I've got uh, a workshop coming up in Port Arthur, Texas at a community college down there. I'm going down for a couple of days and doing a concert and doing a guest artist workshop mm -hmm. and talking to the students there, partly about just life as a musician, but about Nashville specifically. And I have a lot of friends in New Orleans specifically, but in different places on the Gulf Coast that I play with. So I go down there on a regular basis and play. So that's that's always great. Playing music in New Orleans is, yeah. is always a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, I've gotten to do it too. Yeah. That's cool. But you have a really packed schedule with all your students. Between that and the university job and the performing and yeah. yeah it's, how, how often are you performing? I'm performing, I probably do about in Nashville, two, three shows a month, oh, and wow, then I play, I play writer's nights and then do stuff on the road, and yeah. it, it keeps me busy, but I, I really don't like to sit still. Yeah, well, that's good. You get a good business for it. I You're like to keep super moving. Busy. Well, it's a, it's a wonderful service. Everybody check out NashvilleGuitarGuru.com. Um, it sounds like you got something to offer just about everybody. I that's mean, the idea. I you're e even a professional... Uh, or would be professional could come back and, and learn how to be boy I wish that there'd been someone around to help me avoid so many of those mistakes starting out on the road with the band You know, it's just it's it's really hard to, to be able to multitask keep your eye on the artistic side of it and uh, Not get lost in what other people want from you right. So um, are you gonna would you like to play something for I us? I would love to play something okay, that would be good. great Well, can we do it right here? Should we break? Uh, like, yeah, we can do it. yeah, let's do it. All right Dave Isaacs is going to play us, uh, the guitar guru is going to play something for us here on Music Business Week. This you know, is very exciting. When I, came, when I came up with that title, mm -hmm. and at first I thought, wow, no one's, no one's used that before. I went and searched it online yeah. and went, no one's used this? This is amazing. This is really something that sounded like a good idea to me. And then I thought, well, do I really want to use the word guru? Is that going to make people think that I'm saying I know everything? But guru just means teacher and guide, really. And certainly, like I said, the teachers that I worked with, the way that they thought about things, it was that big picture thing. It was about mind over matter. It was about brain and ears over fingers. Were these public school teachers to start? Um, no, this was more when I was in college and then I went to college in New York City and had a really, like here, large pool of very successful and very accomplished people to work from, yeah. to, to work with. And so I had great guitar teachers, but I also had great vocal coaches who were working with people in musical theater and um, I worked for a while with um, someone studying Alexander Technique, which is a, a body movement discipline and about posture and how, you know, guitar players are like this all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I still catch myself in those habits, but to learn how to hold yourself, that's something else that I do with a lot of people is, you know, you look at them play and see how they're uncomfortable holding the guitar and just a little tweak in what they do with it. The mechanics of how you make this construct the body and this device here get along better and all the best players can do that yeah all right well i have to say this because i wrote this song with my wife jerry so okay cool.
right. It sounded great. Thank you. Awesome guitar. Thank you. Dave Isaacs, thanks so much for being on Music Business Week, and thanks for joining us here on Talkopolis. We'll see you next time. And check out NashvilleGuitarGuru.com. Thanks so much. Great song, guitar. Microcasting for your city. Talkopolis.